everybody, it's uh, Mike from Viz Academy. So I am a teacher for Viz Academy, and uh, well, uh, Viz Academy created an online training that will help you how to, uh, that will help you become a professional in uh, 3D rendering software called 3ds Max. All the work that you can see on our Instagram and other social media were mostly or actually created only by our students. Uh, so if you want to learn how to create those images, make sure to uh, also join in. So that's for the introduction and hello everybody. Uh, welcome uh, Kavanda, Asim, Rashid, Diego. Uh, also welcome um, Ibrahim, Adriana and Nomadis at 3D Brazil on. <laughs> nice to have you. Uh, Lurana and everybody else. Uh, so, Fuad, also welcome. Really glad to have you guys. I am super uh, glad to hear that everybody's joining in. And what can I say? This topic is going to be one of those that a lot of you anticipated, and we're going to go through the basics. So, beginner's animation, that means that we're not going to go too deep into too many. Uh, topics at one time but we're going to learn how to build or how to prepare the scene to create this very simple yet uh, I would say complicated animation in well beginner's eyes because there are hundreds of small objects that are reacting to a different one in its position on top of everything we're also going to create a short I would say a video that's going to look like this uh, where everything pretty much animates not only the um, clouds but also the sun movement so we're pretty much going to pretend that we're creating a time lapse uh, so this is going to not only be about modeling but also about animation so i hope that everybody's going to uh enjoy what we've prepared for you so first thing first i would like to ask you what kind of software you're using guys and obviously uh what brings you to us uh, what type of animation you're mostly interested in uh throughout the, our uh, webinar remember that you can ask questions and I'm going to try to answer our chat as much as I can but also I'm only human so don't expect me to look at it all the time although uh, you're pronounced my name well <laughs> thank you <laughs> that, that's uh, that's really nice to hear Rauf welcome uh, I actually have a lot of struggle each group that we have um, because I want to make sure that I do not mispronounce my students names and it really is a tricky so uh, the first few webinars I always uh, kind of butcher the names and I must be the most annoying person ever uh, you know uh, saying uh, Raimona instead of Rimona and stuff like this it's just well uh, it is what it is but it actually uh, my students are uh, extremely forgiving uh, on that uh, said topic uh, so welcome everybody again and let's get started so before we really begin, I would like to um, quickly analyze what we have here, because the whole setup that, I, that I've built is extremely simple, but uh, the complexity of it comes not from the model, but how it behaves and how it reacts uh, to a certain object in your uh, scene. Um, in our audience, we're also going to see some of our students, and I can see that there are a few uh, of you guys that so tune in and every time so it's really nice to have you i'm really proud uh, that you're joining in uh, on pretty much every webinar and it's really really uh, helpful so how about we get started the first thing uh we need to go over the very very basis of animation what it is what we can animate and what objects really allow us to animate themselves so first of all we need to understand that any object in 3ds max can be animated um, animation really comes uh, not from just some kind of scripting or thinking about it uh, prior. Y yes, it's actually going to be extremely helpful, but uh, the main UI related to animation is in this area. So it's really going to be very good to have a little bit of understanding what um, buttons really are responsible for uh, your animation. On top of everything, we also have this part, which is even more important than uh, the previous one. But uh, how about we just start over uh, the very basis? 
First, we've got our timeline. This means that we're going to be um, able to change, uh, let's say, the movement or we're going to force time to pass in our animation. So uh, what do you want to, um, let's say, um, think about or uh, the type of um, let's say brackets we're going to be working with is uh, each 30 frames so each time when I move my slider slightly to the right each time when this element moves this is one frame and to create animation you typically need to make sure that you have enough frames to produce one so um, in many cases you're going to pretty much just render out hundreds of very similar images that will look like this and all of them combined will be uh, packed into one consistent animation because between each frame there's so little movement that is barely visible but thanks to the fact that we're displaying them all one by one in uh, 30 frames per second this means that our animation actually can take, take place and it makes a little bit more sense so how do we set up our animation the easiest way of setting it up in 3ds max is to click on auto key by default it's going to be n key on your keyboard it's a very common thing that a lot of people will just press and on their keyboard and it's pretty much going to uh, mean that uh, they are creating animation but they don't know about it and this can really create a lot of problems uh, where we already made a video on um, morph modifier so Rauf if you would like to uh, visit that one it's also about parametrics um, that would be highly appreciated we can also use um, a morph modifier if we want to but in this case I want to do something different uh, because we want to have more flexibility uh, so can we use rail clone for this I think we can but I am not sure about the relations that we're going to be animating so yes and no okay so animation uh, if we move our slider the time is a slider uh, to zero which you cannot see really because I was uh, in the way if our uh, time slider is on zero this is going to mean that we are on neutral so whatever we do is not going to be stored or saved but as soon as we move this away a little bit what you're going to see is that uh, we created a keyframe the keyframe is both at zero and at our uh, let's say uh, 38th frame because that's where our time slider went if I now try to move those sliders, you can see that the movement really happened. Although the movement is a little bit weird because it kind of starts slowly and then it just eases out. Uh, so this is due to the fact that we've got this part of UI not yet set up. So let's first go over those elements that we might be interested in. So here we've got the auto key, which is pretty much going to be responsible for our animation and all the processes we're going to be going through. You can animate any object in 3ds Max, any material, material property and any value. You can animate lights and you can animate helpers. You can animate splines as long as you follow the instructions. So auto key is extremely powerful. And now let's go ahead and uh, continue so uh, what we have here is that we can now change our type of animation that we're going to be creating per each key uh, I typically make sure to change it to just straight animation point A to point B so this time when I move this object from point A to B it's just going to be a straight movement just like that there's no ease in is out it's just going to be simple animation from point A to point B this also brings us to the point where we kind of want to have a little bit of curvature because that's extremely boring type of animation that we can see here and you probably would like to uh, see some, um, hello Javiera nice to have you how are you uh, is it is that is it that Javiera? Uh, I'm uh, hoping that it is. So Javiera is one of my students, um, uh, former students actually, uh, but she was extremely good. We might be able to show her work uh, in a few minutes. So 
Uh, you can see that now we're creating this animation and it's the most basic. So each step we take is going to create new keyframes and you can animate the scale, rotation and whatever. But if I now try to rotate the object with, with auto key off, the rotation still remains, but well, the animation didn't change. Uh, but we're going to try to work with that in a second. Uh, so this is pretty much the basics of uh, those and uh, this animation. When, I, when we want to go to key filters, uh, we can just change what type of uh, keys we're going to see on our timeline. So we pretty much could uh, turn off some of them to edit others. Uh, it's a very commonly used uh, tactic to just, let's say, uh, fiddle with the materials and then not touch any kind of movement. So it's just easier that way. Uh, but it's not important at this moment. So set keys, we don't really use this a lot, but uh, if you do it, it's going to automatically create a key for this moment during the animation. So that's, that's also fine. Uh, we also have our uh, play button. So it's pretty much uh, the easiest thing to understand. But what's important in this area is that this small uh, clock with a gear next to it because uh, once we click on it is the time configuration i wish we had something like this in real life but unfortunately it only exists in the needy world so what we can do here is change the time frame that we're going to be operating in so for example we can add the time uh, extra time uh, remember when i told you that uh, we will be working with, uh, let's say, uh, within the frames of 30 frames per second. So if I want to create an animation that's going to be 10 seconds long, I need exactly 300 frames. I'm going to also count in the zero frame. So it's 301 because one is also going to be rendered. Uh, sorry, zero is also going to be rendered, but I'm going to be calculating it from one to 300 because that's pretty much the 300 that I need. But zero is going to be our neutral state. So it's actually going to be very helpful to have it. Uh, so let's click on it. You can also click on rescale time, which is going to just force all the currently created animation in a last uh, uh, frame or let's say last uh, brackets to rescale the, uh, that animation and that's going to be it. Um, what's the difference between 60, 30 and 15 frames per second? Think about it this way. If I'm going to um, open some kind of image and I'm going to change the animation uh, 15 times per second, you're, bare, you're barely going to see any movement. But if I'm going to uh, stick my finger on it and it's going to move a little bit faster, the animation is a little bit smoother. So everything makes a little bit more sense and it's a little bit easier to look at. So how about we create a similar object that I did during my my, uh, in that video. So it's fairly easy to do because I've got some kind of swirl and it's extruded with a few additional elements. And then there's this disc that reacts to something called helper. So we're going to be working with helpers today. So uh, buckle up. Okay. One thing that I'm going to uh, sell you something that you're going to probably really, really like because uh, helpers are actually very helpful when it comes to selecting and working with bigger objects in 3ds Max, especially the more complex objects that have uh, gajillions of polygons uh, that you don't necessarily uh, need, want to um, uh, proxify for reasons. So we're going to go to our uh, creation panel, select line and create a simple line. Then we right click on the vertices to make sure that they're smooth. So pretty much the process should take you approximately 15 seconds to uh, well complete. Now we're going to do a few of those funny things. Uh, first, I'm going to copy this shape so I can use it later because I will. Also, we're going to go for extrusion and we're going to just extrude this up until we have the right proportions. Remember that at the moment we're just creating some animation that's going to be good looking, but we're not going to be um, following any kind of measurements, just not yet. Uh, so uh, let's go. Hey Mike, a warm welcomes from Egypt. Thank you. Uh, Mustafa, that's actually really nice of you. Mike, if one frame taking 30 minutes uh, to render, it means 30 frames take 15 hours. Yes, that is why um, 
that is why most of our um, render farms are actually in use. Uh, animations take time and it's extremely crucial to make sure to optimize your scene to the very brim when creating animations because you cannot just throw everything at your computer and wait 15 hours and then realize in the morning that it didn't render well. Um, that is why larger studios will have clusters of computers to render uh, on. As so typically it's going to be, let's say, three to five computers that will be able to um, uh, digest all of that rendering in, let's say, one hour instead of 15. That's a very important thing to remember. But we will be optimizing our scenes. We will be making sure that everything we do is going to be done in a smart way so we don't have to pay the consequences of, uh, well, being sloppy with our design. Uh, hey Mike, warm welcome. Okay, uh, hi from Kurdistan, India, Brazil. Uh, nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Hi there, um, avid follower here. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Greetings from uh, Philippines. Really nice to hear that. Thank you, the uh, DDNRR architects. <laughs> really nice. Thank you again. Uh, so this is the basic object. So let's call it parametric, but it's not yet there. The, I want to introduce you to a few very, very useful um, tools that not a lot of um, users really um, utilize. And I haven't seen a lot of people use it for some reason, but they those tools are extremely helpful. So now I'm going to create a very thin uh, box that's going to uh, suffice as, let's say, some kind of background for all of the disks that we're going to be adding in a second. Uh, so now let's hide this object and use the line that I have here. I want to select my box, go to tools, and instead of simple array, I'm going to go to align and we're going to take align spacing tool. We could also use the new array modifier, but I kind of want to show you something that is really uh, rarely utilized, but uh, at the same time, extremely powerful because it gives you way more options than regular array would. Um, actually, no, it's more limited, but it's uh, going to be very helpful regardless. So. I'm going to create approximately 65-ish um, of those objects. We're going to make sure that those are instanced and they follow this shape. So whenever we try to change something, it's going to disappear. But don't worry, because it's still there. We just need to update it once again. And as you can see now, it, everything looks really nice up until I change the camera view. But as soon as I click on the tool again, everything reappears. So let's make sure to apply this. Uh, this is not a type of scatter. This is just uh, the simplest method there is out there. So we're now going to unhide all and we've got both our lines and this wall. So it's already going to be a very nice start, but we still don't have those uh, coins or buttons that we were talking about. And I want to also spread them the same way I did in my previous object, but I want to make sure that those are going to be on a slight distance. So in this case, I'm going to uh, convert this line to editable spline. That wasn't really necessary because it's still a line, but we're going to press three on our keyboard and we're going to add a little bit of geometry outline. So in this case, I'm going to just click on that and add enough outline so it's going to be far out, uh, just enough to have a little bit of distance. So this um, should, I could also just move the line, but then this would be not exactly as precise size because if I would be moving this line, some elements would be intersecting and outlining is going to give me slightly better result. Okay, so since we're here, let's um, actually create something that's going to be related to animation. First, we're going to go ahead and go to our helpers. We're going to create a dummy. Um, Yes, it's a dummy. Dummies are extremely helpful. Uh, I really, I love using them. And I'm going to show you an example. If we're going to have a very complex group, let's make sure to create a super big object. I mean, it's going to be a box that's going to be seven uh, iterations uh, thick. Let's add an editable poly to it. Uh, so it's going to be slightly harder to select. You can see that each time I click on it, we have that slight lag that it takes that 
half a second to select. So if I would be selecting two objects like that, 3ds Max is going to just go, wow, I cannot do that. But if I'm going to select this object, go to select and link, and link this to the dummy, what's going to happen is now I don't need to select this object because I could select the dummy and each time when I do that, it's instant. I don't need to load the whole geometry to, of my object into my RAM uh, to control it. I could, for example, just control the dummy and it's extremely convenient because this way I can move very complex objects like buildings, cars and people, for example, in my more complex scenes without really needing to wait extra half a second to select them. Imagine that you're going to have tens of those objects in your scene and you have to select them one by one. It's going to take you a while to do so. So if we don't want to do that, we can just use the dummy that I mentioned. Uh, so uh, this can also be used for groups and other containers of objects. So let's go back and recreate our dummy, which we now know is should be actually called something smarter than dummy because it kind of is degrading uh, to an object that useful. Um, three, thank you, uh, three dimensional. So cool that so many people that actually are interested in 3D jo uh, join in. I am humbled to have you all. Uh, so thank you, really thank you. Now let's continue and we're going to create our first disk. We don't want it to be too big, just something that's going to be big enough. Let's say in my case, it's going to be approximately 11 centimeters. Let's make sure that it's also not going to be too complex. So we're going to take away the height segments. Uh, height is going to be set to one and radius, as I mentioned, 10, 11, but that's really going to be optional in most of the cases because obviously we're going to just create um, and this object to look good. So 32 should be enough for the smoothness of the object. So now we have many options on how to force those two objects to behave the way my previous scene did. So um, you can see that in the previous scene, everything moves. But why does it move? Well, first of all, it moves because there's a dummy in here. And this dummy is controlling all of those objects and they are literally following this object. As somebody in the audience already mentioned, we could use more firm modifier, but then our performance would be very, very low. And that would absolutely destroy the whole setup because if we want flexibility, and uh, well, res um, responsive um, system, we probably want to keep this simple. So let's make sure that we uh, go through, um, let's say pseudo animation at this moment, because we're going to be linking our object and its uh, position to another object. So we've got something called constraints. Constraints are extremely powerful and there are many constraints that you can test out. For example, path constraint is one of those constraints that uh, most of you will be extremely happy about to, because when you will be creating, let's say camera pan, some movement or even dynamic movement, you can use a spline and force your camera to move along that spline, which is really powerful. So we've got position constraint, which is pretty much going to be, uh, well, our object will be in the middle of two objects uh, if we if we uh, force it to. And, and we've got link constraint, we, which we already used for the dummy. And this is also uh, something we used in our uh, previous video about setting up the light. It's really going to be cool. But now we're going to go ahead and go for look at constraint. So look at constraint is going to be uh, forcing our object to follow the position of our current object. So this way, if I, for example, move it up, the object is going to follow. What's going to be important in, in this setup, or let's say something that you should pay attention to, is that uh, you can move your main object away as much as you can, and there is not going to be any kind of change in the object's behavior. So you probably want to make sure that you positioned it on the zero prior to adding the loop constraint. But as soon as I move that object away, uh, the object is going to follow in accordance to its current position. So even now, if I move up, you can see that it's actually rotating and it's trying to, um, uh, let's say, follow the right way. It's just doing its best to help us. Uh, so, okay, uh, as I said, we're going to use this 
uh, to our advantage as always uh, so uh, can we use some kind of array in here well if we use the array modifier at this point uh, the object is going to look like this it's going to be a huge arm just following our object so the array modifier is out of the question so instead we're going to go back to the technique that i just taught you and that is going to be a line clone in the line or spacing tool. We want the spacing tool. Uh, we're going to make sure that those objects are either instances or copies. Instances are going to consume a little bit more RAM on your computer. So you might want to have a little bit of an easier, um, if you know that the object that you're working with is not going to be changed in terms of geometry, size and whatnot, you probably want to go for copies. They consume a little bit less. Sorry, a little bit less RAM. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, change this to copy because I'm not going to be working with all of them at the same time. Now we're going to pick a path. This is the new line that we created. And yeah, uh, now, now when I think about it, I could go for the instance. So that way, if I'm going to change the radius, the radius of all of my objects are going to uh, is going to be updated or we can limit or lower the amount of disks that we're going to be creating i again believe that maybe my um uh, outline should be simply uh, slightly further away uh, that would make the object a little bit better i could work with a pivot or i can move that line away so we're going to decide what we're going to do uh, with this in a second but for now we're going to remember that when you will be doing it at home try to give it a little bit bigger distance or use smaller objects but i'm going to yolo it and we're going to go for 65 we're going to apply this and we're going to change the amount of disks we're rocking so uh, sorry the size of their disks so let's lower that and the height goes down perfecto actually let's make it slightly bigger okay now I got hundreds of small disks to select. How do we do it? Um, the easiest way would be Control Shift A because that's going to select similar. Selecting similar, voila. It's going to select every object that has similar properties, either material wise or uh, any kind of animation wise. It's all about similar properties. Okay, this is not supposed to be happening, sorry. Um, so uh, let's change that. Uh, let's see, so we've got that set up right now let's deselect some of the elements and we want to create as many copies going to, uh, to, uh, to the top as we need so in this case again i'm going to probably just yolo it uh, instance and we're going to go for a 50 ish i think it should be enough we're going to delete the excess anyway so let's see how many too many we have created so probably a lot you can also see that our objects are already um, displaying the behavior that we planned for it so if i move my dummy everything follows and it's really looking fantastic because even now the reflection follows and that's really going to be helpful in this case uh, what plugins or scripts you found uh, useful for 3ds max uh, thank you a7amd <laughs> uh, i typically uh, love I can only tell you that uh, the plugins that I use is obviously Corona. I love copy to modifier or let's say a script that allows you to copy object and put it in another scene or let's say copy and paste objects from different 3ds Max instances. What it really is, it's a macro for save selected as and load, uh, load from file, but it's a very good macro that uh, is very helpful and I actually use it a lot. We also have a video on my most used um, plugins for interiors and exteriors, and I can show you some of them, but honestly, I would refer you to that video. Most of our training dur during our seven week uh, course um, actually goes over without any kind of extra plugins. Over time, once you have a little bit of better understanding of 3ds Max, you're going to be able to move inside of 3ds Max more uh, let's say you're going to be a little bit more acquainted with it and you're going to be able to decide what elements of your work should be improved and that's when you want to work with plugins uh, sometimes you don't need to use them at all but some uh, plugins are very important is this live recording uh, 
N N A G. Uh, yes, it is a live session, not a recording. So uh, we're live. We're live. Um, okay. So once uh, you have it, your once we have plugins, you're probably and once you are a little bit acquainted with 3ds Max, you want to think about using plugins and you want to start thinking about expanding your tool set because 80% uh, of things you do in your software should be done with almost the same tools and periodically or from time to time you're going to use 20% of tool sets which is going to be uh, just extras so I want to show you some of the work by uh, my students uh, because uh, somebody just uh, mentioned it so I would say that it would be good uh, I like your vitality thank you hi Mike I if I render elements of on the render does the rendering time uh, short shorter um, it's all going to depend what time, uh, Christian, it all depends on what type of elements you uh, have in mind. There are render elements that will uh, elongate your render time. So for example, if we add extra texture um, in 3ds Max, if we go to render element CD texture and we apply it, 3ds Max has to generate that extra texture on all of your objects. So this is going to slow down the performance. But if it comes to most of those C essentials, it's uh, barely noticeable slowdown, but it really it's less than a pro percent, less than that. So it's really unnoticeable, but it's all going to really boil down to your RAM usage. If your RAM is fast and everything loads in, fast enough, you're not even going to uh, see any kind of difference because the rendering per se is going to take exactly the same time. The rest of the render elements also generate specific, uh, specific maps, specific effects. So sometimes it is also going to slow down your rendering, but it's not a slowdown, the type of 20 uh, or 30 minutes per render. It's extra three seconds, it's extra five seconds uh, on a one hour period. Uh, but uh, typically you really cannot notice that. Uh, hello from Brazil, hello. Hello, thanks for the study. Can you make a tutorial about GrowFX? We might, uh, Sergey. we might create one in some near future. That's a very cool idea, thank you. Uh, I'm going to put it in my notes because we uh, we're also taking requests from you, so uh, all of your questions are um, welcome. Okay, I uh, cannot read that, but I guess it's in Greek or in Cyrillic. Um, one of those, because those two um, are very similar. I, I unfortunately cannot read that, sorry. Um, so. Uh, if you could, please try to use English. Uh, okay, let's continue. Now, um, about the chat, we're here. Now, going back to our object. Since everything is going to be following our dummy, uh, how about we create the animation? Uh, since we know the basics, we now know that we can start from point A, go to point B, but Prior to any animation, whatever you're doing, whatever you're going to be creating in your 3D career. First of all, have some boundaries. <laughs> I mean, make sure that you're going to know what you're aiming at. And in my case, I know that the best possible uh, way of limiting yourself from doing needless experiments is first decide on the camera position. So let's go ahead and create one uh, camera. Then let's go for C and, and uh, make sure that we uh, position everything in the correct manner. So uh, once I have my camera, it's uh, going to allow me to decide where the animation is uh, supposed to be played out. So let's just um, make sure to shift F. So this is going to be our save frames. Save frames are extremely important when creating any kind of videos, because this is going to literally t uh, show you what your current camera setup is uh, going to be working with. So 0 0.75. And now we're going to change this to uh, the width is going to 180. So it's pretty much going to be a more Instagram. If we change it to 135, it's going to be 0 0.8 and this is a very popular uh, 4 to 5 um, um, ratio it's very popular for social media and we can pretty much see that this is already quite good looking but I want this to be more uh, similar to the object or let's say the scene that we created uh, in the previous um, uh, 
3ds max instance so let's make sure to go to camera camera target and we're going to move the target slightly higher and this introduces a new problem because everything is skewed and we hate skew uh, every uh, student of mine knows how pedantic you have to be about this problem so we're just going to make sure to go ahead and select our camera and click on tilt shift correction this is not something that um, is uh, let's say um, forbidden knowledge it's just makes your shot look more uh, refined so we're going to move it here so we can fake that we actually have the whole environment built uh, we're probably going to add some ground only but it's not going to um, require a lot hello Diego can you show me where you get macro for autosave below the workspaces you mean the autosave here or this one uh, so this is the default uh, thing in 3ds max but this thingy is pretty much default also in 3ds max 2024 and so i recommend you to uh stefan i recommend you to update your 3ds max away from 3ds max what's the software you found it good for 3d animation well software for good for 3d animation that depends on the type of animation you're creating because honestly 3ds max uh, is the best but if it's garments cloth uh, and stuff like this i would say marvelous designer or again 3ds max if it's about um yeah it's pretty much going to boil down to 3ds max always uh, but some animations some movements some rigging can be done outside but it's not animation per se so yes 3ds max uh, hello sir good evening from uh, pakistan hello arch uh, nice to have you uh, you are one of those uh, guys that uh, visit almost every of our webinars uh, really uh, thankful for that ha, uh, i use 3ds max 2025 sorry for uh useless question nah, it wasn't useless you just uh, should know that new version has a few very handy things that will be very helpful uh, by the way guys uh, all of our students everybody that signs uh, up for our training uh, by going to visit academy co uk is eligible to obtain autodesk um, educational license we are now uh, able to give you the whole uh, package of Autodesk uh, for well, that is uh, within the educational um, brackets. So it's AutoCAD, Revit, it's um, 3ds Max, Maya, everything that is uh, in the educational license uh, brackets. We can give it to you for free for one year if you sign up to our training that's a very cool thing we also have a good discount for uh, any kind of a rendering engine as long as it's corona uh, because uh, we are also able to give you a student's license which is also one year but that's a discount it's uh, the student's license offer is pretty much just 10 percent of the regular price it's not exactly 10 percent but very close to that and it's a bargain uh, you probably pay more for a take out whenever you go out to eat than for a yearly license of corona so that's a bargain uh hello from brazil hello uh, hello mike hello arch <laughs> another arch art studio our live arch live uh, we've we had also another architect out there a little bit higher in our chat and uh, didi and rr are architects really nice to have you guys i am super glad to have you uh so by the way guys keep the questions coming uh, all questions are welcome just a quick sip and let's continue now as i was saying we need to create that animation so uh, the best way of creating animation is obviously the auto key we no longer need this original the og element that we had prior and thanks to the fact that we now limited our camera view whenever we move something we could for example go to this camera shift f we can see exactly what we're doing and whenever i do something in my second viewport we're going to see exactly what's going on um again it's all about saving your time and if i would be spending even a minute animating anything around here and you can barely see any animation anything happening it would be a waste so let's start from this spot where everything is pretty much flat out uh, laid on to on in the scene so it's pretty much going to be easier for us uh, to position every object so okay let's just uh, make it happen 
we are starting here. First, we turn on our auto key and we're going to go from neutral zero frame. Again, uh, zero frame is here. You can now see, uh, you, can, you can see it here, but you cannot see me, so I'm turning me back on. And let's uh, make sure that the first movement is going to take approximately two seconds. Uh, so we want to put this around the 60th uh, first frame. So we're going to move it from point A to point B. Um, whatever type of movement, uh, wh whatever loops I'm going to take along the way, doesn't matter because it's an animation from point A to point B. We're going to change it in a second because now we're going to move it even for, uh, further away. So it's going to be next two seconds and we're just going to move it somewhere out there. So it's everything moves along and every object is still looking at our main object. Also, to make it more interesting, let's force this object to go all the way up. So all of those, uh, let's say, scales are going to move up as well. So our animation pretty much looks like this, where everything just moves from bottom to the top at the very end. And it's very interesting because now everything reacts to our object's positioning. And I kind of like it. Uh, CAD OS BR and Live, I am not sure uh, what you mean. Um, if you Saito, if you could um, write that again, but um, probably um, a little bit differently, I, I would um, um, appreciate that. How can I get a plan or section for a parametric from out of to CAD. Um, Dyna, uh, we don't have any kind of CAD uh, for this file, but if you want to find some CAD, uh, let's say, drawings, you may want to look uh, on websites like Art Daily or something similar, but uh, I cannot really tell you where you can get it because I just don't use it that much unless my client sends it to me. Uh, he's looking for Brazilians in chat. Okay. Um, mm -hmm, yeah, there are some Brazilians. So if he is, he probably will find some. Okay. So now we're going to continue with our animation and to not over, um, not to make it too long. 181 in my case is going to be the third and final part of the animation. Look, I moved it down and up, and now if I play it, it's going to go point A, point B, point C, and back. So, okay, it's boring. I mean, it's cool, but we need to give it a little bit smoothness. We want this to be a little bit more interesting. As I mentioned, we could create that line that uh, is going to be our uh, curve that we would be placing our object on but it's not going to be that easy or uh, it actually is but we want to dive into another thing that not a lot of people use that much but recently in newest 3ds max it was greatly improved so we're going to go ahead and try to jump into our motion motion paths and here you can see that the whole motion path literally is shown i'm going to alt Q everything out so we can only focus on this thing and now this is the cool part because uh, you can see that each point uh, represents a different uh, keyframe so this keyframe is pretty much going to be that point right super cool so if I now select it I can also do a little bit of a breaking here so I can set the tangents for it so it's softening the movement so now it's, it, it is not going from point A to point B, but point A to point B. And I know I, I'm a little bit um, uh, tr failing at being funny, but it really helps uh, to uh, allow you, uh, it, uh, it really helps me to uh, go through the topics. Okay, so now we've got a very soft animation from point A to point B. If you need to, or if you want to, you can still move those independently. So you don't need to go to the very complex curve editor that would allow you to do exactly the same thing. And you can see that all the movement is displayed in here. So all of the values that we changed are displayed from zero value to 100 and beyond. So this this is very cool because this is our time frame and this is the value that each of those um, elements represent. Just putting it in perspective that it is possible to 
put each movement or each value of movement on a graph like this to represent it and um, be able to really um, well show how it uh, displays is absolutely amazing for me it just blows my mind that this is how it works and uh, we can actually see that this is our frame 60 uh, so all the movement is here but again it's a little bit overwhelming uh, so we're going to go ahead and try to uh, go for the animation as we created it but using the brackets that we went for also around your main point there are those two beziers if we select one we can extend our animations curve or skew it any direction we want to create even more um, value or more um, so a little bit softer animation if we want to so for example looking from the top view I believe that this movement when I unhide all the objects should be slightly moved so we're going to uh, movement should be moved so I'm going to adjust this also I'm going to grab this bracket and move it slightly away but first I'm going to break this tangent into um, the curved tangent now we can break this one and add a little bit of that animation on all of those elements so this way we can get a little bit closer or more um, more exact when it comes to following the um, original shape and it's very helpful because motion paths are super super convenient when it comes to animation plus uh, once you have those extra lines in here uh, they kind of look cool so it's uh, good for your Instagram reels if you want to uh, show off on your uh, social media because obviously you want to do it for a little bit of recognition a little bit of portfolio work is the parametric from the scale in 3ds max accurate or is it the only for visualization this exact um, work that I'm doing right now is uh, for visualization purpose only uh, because uh, I'm not being accurate on um, let's say um, uh, intentionally but you can be as accurate as you want you can be 100% uh, accurate to the atomic level if you want to but it's just going to be pretty much you typing in all the correct values and in this case I'm just messing around to show you the basics okay so uh, we know that we can animate our geometry helpers we can add any kind of constraint we want but uh, we also want to do something uh, probably a little bit extra but before I get into it I was about to show you some work of my students so I kind of want to do that uh, so this is work of current group so this is Davey that started from absolutely um, intermediate level actually so he's not a tall beginner but he's a beginner in 3ds max so um, it, as far as I remember and I can be not very accurate about this um, well he's starting he's learning a uh, with 3ds max or in 3ds max with us uh, so this is his uh, third a second interior uh, a bit of a close-up from it i absolutely love this shot and this is the first interior he created with us and i must say that it's extremely extremely uh impressive the only thing that i shown him how to do during the webinar was this coffee table because he didn't know how to create this type of glass and he wanted to make sure that it's going to look good and we went over the whole topic online so now it's here and it looks absolutely awesome congratulations navy uh that that's just amazing i i really am proud of you uh so Another work is by Francesca, and Francesca is a very ambitious person. So she came in, um, well, I'm not going to give you too much personal uh, information about her because that would be unfair, but I'm going to just say this, that Francesca, uh, throughout our training, this one isn't, it isn't, isn't finished yet, so I'm just showing you the work in progress for some of the shots. This is the finished product, product uh, one of her projects actually. Uh, so she actually, um, um, during our webinar, did something amazing. Uh, because her render was so good, she added a Godzilla out there. It was a huge, gigantic Godzilla foot uh, out there. And it was so well integrated that I thought for a second that it was actually a three because the render is absolutely mind-blowing. So congratulations, Francesca, uh, on finishing your first 
merge not with us uh, so Francesca uh, congratulations again because wow uh, this is another shot but this time by Passant uh, so she's a star again it's one of those shots that you just look at and you cannot tell if it's 3D or not. If we really zoom in, you probably will find one or two mistakes that we could point you towards, but honestly, what's the point in that? <laughs> Just have a go. Uh, now, this is a close-up that she created and another scene that came absolutely out of the blue, and this was literally uploaded the last webinar, and I absolutely love this work. Uh, she really nailed it. Uh, next, we've got uh, Ilias. Well, that's something cool. Uh, so uh, we are allowing our students to work on images that they would like to excel that uh, on a style that they want to um, enhance. And we might uh, we try to make sure that everything our students do is going to be the top quality. So for example, we've got Judy's work and this is not yet finished, but I wanted to really highlight how um, much uh, or how little progress is going to be needed to finish this from this point now on. And currently we're um, adjusting some of the elements like re uh, reflections, uh, adding the background. So I'm just proving that the, those images aren't coming out of the blue. Those, This is a very complicated process that we guide our students uh, through uh, step by step and during our, not only during our webinars, but also during our support hours. Uh, again, something by Matthias. Uh, just a white render so you can really believe that it's a render uh leila uh, this is also working progress so uh, believe it or not this is not yet finished now uh, she's going to make it even better um this is by bartos congratulations nothing to say here it's just beautiful uh, so congratulations bartos again uh, i'm going to say that a lot uh, and we've got sadaf's work so this is the previous iteration of this shot he already uploaded a newer one but uh, at the time of uh, me gathering resources for this webinar this was uh, the version i downloaded and i said yeah I'm going to show the next version on our Instagram once it's done and so you can guys compare it. Okay, and Sarah, congratulations. Nothing else can be said here. It's just photo. Uh, again, we've got Simona, uh, more of Simona, and we've got uh, Tamino. Yes. So again, you cannot really put your finger on it. It's just amazing. I love your work, guys. It, it's really hard to tell that it's 3D. Um, we've got Chloe, uh, another star, and this would be pretty much all the images that I gathered for this webinar, but next week I'm going to show you even more because we're just are about to start our exteriors so that's going to be even more exciting because our interiors are going to be done and then we're going to move on to working with some extras uh, hello uh, to everybody uh, from Uzbekistan uh, sleep time too <laughs> a very nice job I know uh, uh, any tip on real world paint color codes to RGB so I can use it in max uh, SPN. Um, I would say that in that case, you want to go to your preferences and ensure that you're using the right color picker. If you want to, you can change to Corona Improved Picker, and that way you're going to have a little bit, uh, I would say, um, a little bit more precise coloring. Uh, as for the color scheme, it's all about translating the uh, color schemes to Gamma 2.2, but that's very complicated and not very uh, uh, very um, uh, efficient. But long story short, once we uh, change the color picker, it's going to allow the hex um, code in and it's just improved, it's better. And if you want to be more accurate, you can change the RGB to zero to one. You can also change it to sRGB, that one to 100%. You can go for linear light and we can also change the sampling, which is amazing. The default picker is the one I am used to and most of my students use the default one because that's the one that's going to be set uh, once you turn on 3ds Max for the first time. So I just changed it back, but I use the improved one for my day-to-day -day work whenever I do product shots for example I am from Oman uh, great uh, save us arch another arch uh, Eric Apollinaro uh, brew uh, <laughs> brew to you too I guess um, welcome hello everyone hello uh, so 
animation. So we can animate our geometry, we can animate helpers, but we can also animate lights and we can and animate environment so let's just do that because we want to see how it's done so first i'm going to create corona sky which is going to be used as our environment to create this corona sky i'm not going to go into details about it but uh, if you want to you can just follow along and i promise it's going to look good let's go for enable clouds so they will look better let's go to our render setup and we're going to quickly uh, transfer our corona sky to the scene tab where we've got single map we take the single map and we move it from corona sky to the single map make sure to grab it by this small button here and copy it as instance so any changes that we make here will transition to our main shot we can actually see how it looks like right now thanks to the clouds and all the all the rest of the values that we've added doesn't look half bad but we definitely need to take control of some of the elements so for example first thing i'm going to do to avoid adding any materials is attach the material override then i'm going to to go to non and we're going to click on corona corona physical material then we've got our material applied and uh, since we're just going to go for minus one exposure we might as well just continue if if we want to add a sun we're going to do it by going to our creation panel which is in our command uh, area so let's go for lights select uh, corona from the list go to corona sun and we're going to just apply corona sun at a very nice but shallow angle compared to our object once we start our rendering again we're going to notice that the scene completely changed and there's a little bit of different vibe to it because now there's a little bit of sun shining in our scene and that looks almost identical to the animation that we created previously okay so about the animation can we animate lights yes the same way as we would be animating any object we can just move it to the end of our animation uh, let's say 300 and because we're doing a time lapse i'm going to move it slightly to the left so it kind of moves um to uh, to the uh, different hour and also we're going to move it slightly lower but if you want to be precise you want to also go to the motion path and add a little bit of um, uh, angle to it but i'm just going to be more boring about it and i'm just going to move uh, this sun a little bit lazier because we don't want the sun to go uh, spinning around our uh, flat plane which is earth i know i'm just joking uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take our corona camera can we animate cameras yes and we can animate literally any property whatsoever so for example i can do this very small pan which is going to be extremely helpful in this instance so let's just move it here okay so now over the span of our animation the whole um object is going to now look way more lifelike but if we start rendering you're going to notice that the clouds are here clouds are still here clouds are still in the same position Okay, so that's boring. So what we're going to do is go to auto key, go to the very end of our animation, and we're going to go to material editor, and we're going to double click on our Corona sky, and here we've got our face. So what do we do? Do we change the face to something like 50? No, we add the smallest value we can think of, like 0 0.5 or 0 0.1. This should be enough to really add a lot of dynamic uh, movement to our clouds. So uh, this is going to just change their uh, behavior. You can see that each um, each frame and this change um, this cloud changes slightly so uh, it's no longer exactly the same cloud and comparing this area to that area you can see that the cloud just moves like a normal cloud actually would so it's a good thing to have it now what do we do next well we kind of also want to add at least a little bit of uh, cloud movement so uh, in that case you can go for offset and change that so auto key let's add something like five meters extra uh, at the last frame so we're going to move it here and we're going to also add um, the movement of 50 meters because those are clouds so we kind of want them to kind of move away so 50 meters for clouds is like two centimeters on the screen so we could go even for 500 10 times more and it's barely going to move for us because now if we continue rendering you're going to see that the clouds are slowly moving but also transforming over time so this 
just means that we made something more lifelike. If you want to, you can also add the other offset, which is going to be cool. You can change the phase and add the con uh, con contrails or, our, uh, or as uh, some people will call it, chemtrails. Uh, so I have a question. How to add background buildings and side buildings in render to max for rendering exterior renderings like commercial building? And what position of sun is the best commercial building exterior? Arch life. I would say that for for this exact question, I recommend you checking out our um, previous videos on on the set topics, especially the sun positioning uh, was explained in the exact video about sun positioning. So this would allow you to not only position the sun uh, exactly to the ge uh, geographic um, setting, so that's going to be exactly where it's supposed to be um, in accordance to the map or let's say geographical uh, position but also it's going to allow you to set the position sun position in accordance to the time of the year so you're literally going to be able to set exact hour exact date and you're going to see if if you sit on that bench in march is there going to be sun there? I, I mean, it's not going to take into account any clouds, but it's definitely going to be enough to at least uh, calculate the position. So if you're into this type of Im uh, imagery, you're going to be able to do that. As for the buildings and adding them to exterior commercial buildings, it's all going to come down to what do you want to do? What's the reference? What is our plan? What is our goal? So in that case, I would like you to give me more info or an example. Obviously, we go over this topic during our training, but that's really ahead of us because we're going to get there with my current group in a week uh, so uh, they'll probably tell you how to do it the next we few webinars how can we achieve perfect glass reflection in exterior render uh, something 47 welcome um, how is your name like that I mean uh, you've got a bracket an extra bracket now uh, congratulations I guess uh, so uh, to um, have a perfect glass reflection you have to have something to be reflected not only that but also the glass has to have the right shape because if you're going to think about uh, buildings and everything around them you probably want to uh, think about uh, something like skyscrapers right and uh, I'm assuming that this is what you're asking about uh, I am using 3ds Max and V-Ray good work uh, but I would recommend you to try out Corona it's just simpler nonsense free when it comes to glass you want to remember that glass is pretty much a liquid in a in a more solid state so if we look at reflections on uh, some kind of skyscrapers and uh, larger buildings although in in uh, hindsight or in a bigger picture it appears like those are reflecting everything quite uh, literally uh, what's happening is each of those uh, panels has slight small um, let's say difference and those differences that wobble and all of those small imperfections is what makes the reflection more natural so adding that is going to be important i go over this topic with my students a lot uh, during our training but all the tricks and how to do it the most proper way I'm going to reserve for the students. So now, once we have our animation and it plays really nicely, our sun travels uh, across the sky, we've got a little bit of clouds ch uh, chasing, uh, how about we render it? Uh, oh, but wait a second. Oh no, I've got two cameras. Mike, what do I do now? I've got two cameras and I want to render it. So. If you want to render, for example, uh, two shots or two cameras at the same time, um, it's, poor, let's say, impossible to render two cameras at the same time. But if you want to render uh, one after another to have a little bit more interesting shot, for example, some uh, shots similar to the one that I'm going to show you in a second, just give me one, one minute, I'm going to find something that might be uh, good enough to show you. Um, 
So this is from our uh, previous, uh, one of our previous webinars, and I'm hoping that this is going to be the right video. So if you want to create something similar where you have multiple uh, shots from just one, uh, from one uh, building, from one um, scene, it's going to be a good idea to probably create this animation and render it out. But you've got two separate cameras and we know that we can render one camera at a time. So I'm going to show you the right setup for it. It's also going to be working for uh, your um, any kind of interior with multiple cameras. So you don't have to do some kind of um, um, gymnastics to do exactly what I did. So. Uh, if, some a few years ago before i was able to uh, create uh, something uh, well um, in a professional manner i was uh, kind of figuring out everything on my own because this academy wasn't really a thing so what i did is i created a, a shot then i Move the camera, animating it, and then I did three shots and I rendered this out and rendered that out as an animation. But that was very time consuming. And if I needed to adjust even one angle, all of them had to be adjusted as well. Nightmare, literal nightmare. But now, what you can do, it's not now, it's an old method, but you can go to rendering, go to bat render, and here you can add as many views as you want. Each view can represent different time frames. So we can override the preset, go to, from zero to something. So let's go for camera one. We're going to go from, go from zero to 100. Then we can set the resolution and we can go to camera and select which camera we're rendering. In this case, we can go to camera two and do the exact same thing and change the preset or let's say the animation output from 101 to let's say 200. And this way, once we render those one after another, or let's say start our rendering, all of those frames are going to be created. At the same time, remember that you have to set the output path, so name that, uh, those uh, frames in a possibly um, understandable manner. But let's assume that you're already rendering everything and everything is saved on your drive. Remember, there's a trick to saving your benchmarks, or sorry, um, batch renderers, because we can go to the comment tab. Here we got output. If you put the output um, first, prior to creating any kind of animation. Oh, by the way, um, I did a funny test. I, I think it's going to look quite nice. Uh, oh, no, it's the wrong one. Okay, I did a funny test of a short video tutorial that I think is going to be cool to upload at some point. But that's a pretty, uh, let's say that's just a small uh, preview of it someday uh, so we go to our files we create the file we want so let's go for animation 01 or let's say um, parametric uh, dot jpeg we save it and now we run our render but only to load it into our ram to refresh everything in 3ds max doesn't need to render anything. We close it and now what's going to happen is that if we delete our views and recreate them, you will see that the output path is already assigned because you did it prior in your comment tab. This is going to save you a little bit of work because I know just for two this is not a lot but typically I had 12 cameras in my interiors and this was a literal nightmare to name all of those files and here you've got view 12 which is super, super convenient because you're going to be able to set up everything once uh, and for all, and it's going to be super convenient. Okay, but what do we do once you have your files, you have your frames, how do we compose them in the simplest, fastest um, manner ever? Well, you probably want to have some kind of rendered uh, frames, just like we had with our animation. So um, let's just use a different animation that I just shown you, but we're going to use it in Photoshop. So file, we go to open, and then we select the file, um, let's say directory. Once we're there, we're going to select the camera that we're interested in first. Then we're going to select the very first frame and go to image sequence. So once we click on image sequence, it's going to allow us to load every consecutive frame that comes after one, uh, after zero. So zero, one, two, three, and so on. 
open and now we're going to decide what frame rate we want remember at the very beginning i said that typically you want to go for for 30 frames per second if your client is going to ask you ask you for a higher frame count you kind of want to take this into your um com uh, let's say compensation you want to calculate that click ok and then we're going to have this in photoshop okay it looks like an image mm, what do we do now well you want to go to window and go to timeline we click on timeline and did you know that you can create animation in photoshop you can and we just created it based on the same time frame as we had in 3ds max so what we do next is file also open or we can import i prefer to open open we go to camera number two we open camera number two we do the image sequence we do the same we click ok and we've got the same uh, situation it's also going to work so now we select our uh, layer we duplicate the layer and we can move it to the first file i'm doing it the simplest way possible i know that there are more complex and uh, let's say more professional ways of doing it and i'm not saying that it, there are not going to be better but they're not going to be as simple and not, as nonsense free as those that i'm showing you right now so if you're more experienced follow your own knowledge if you are a beginner do what i do then we can just wait for it to just play out in or just drop into our ram so right now we're pre-rendering but it's not rendering really uh, it's just uh, well um preparing the preview as you can see the preview goes really slowly but it's not really that bad uh, so we now have the second frame if you have any better software that you can use it to uh, let's say <clears throat> And add any kind of effects transitions like uh, adobe after effect again i could do this in after effect i could do this in uh, da vinci i could do this in any kind of uh, more complex software but i want to do it in photoshop so everybody can follow along now once we have this simplest uh, and, uh, let's say simplest animation ever we can play it out in normal speed so it's actually 30 frames per second now because it's pre-animated or pre-rendered in our ram uh, but that's beside the point now we're going to export this and finally create the video we go to uh, our file we click on export render video uh, by default it should be set to mp4 and uh, just ensure that it is so here you're going to have uh, untitled or the title of your file we're going to have dot mp4 that's a video format that's perfect for our usage uh, you select where you want to place it select folder that's quite important remember about it and uh, then we do not change anything around here you don't need to do anything about uh, the, those settings and those settings if you're a beginner if you're more advanced you're probably going to be able to uh, change the codec and whatnot but by default it's going to be good enough we render this out and it's going to take uh, really not a lot of time because it should be uh, those are just images so it's going to take us approximately 15 seconds for this uh, five seconds or seven seconds animation it's not going to be a big thing so it should go really really fast now i don't remember what i said where i really saved it so uh, i believe it's in the previous webinar for no it's actually in this folder uh, so we're here and we're waiting for our untitled 2 mp4 to be finished now it is finished and we can double click on it to play it once you put it on your drive then to your phone you can post it in your in instagram TikTok or at other social media. So this is pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you, what I wanted to conclude with you. This was the beginner level animation and also handling of it. Uh, so I show you, I shown you the start. Make sure to make something beautiful out of it. If you want to join Viz Academy and you want to become one of my students, make sure to visit Viz Academy Co. UK. That website uh, can be seen now on our screen and uh, you click on available dates and you will be able to join our next batch uh, so 
at the moment we've got a november group that starts on the 6th of november uh, remember remember and uh, you want to probably grab that seat seat for you because we're running out of seats and uh, if you want to uh, see me online and, and be able to ask uh, questions go ahead and do that remember that we're not only offering you uh, some uh, webinars uh, three times a week that will um, last at least an hour we also offer online support seven days a week um, which is quite amazing. So our um, team of experienced um, 3D user, 3ds Max users is going to help you along the way with all of the tasks. And I haven't even mentioned those tasks because this is not a, um, a regular training where you go in and you do nothing. It's a training where we tell you what to do. We give you homework, we give you assignments, we make sure that you go over videos, webinars, and also work with our tutors to ensure great results and great results are those that I've shown you at the very beginning of our of our today's webinar all of those images that you can see here were either created by beginner level user just like you because 70% of our and uh, uh, our <laughs> students start from absolute scratch but we also have a few that start with a little bit of knowledge and uh, I'm uh, going to be absolutely as uh, let's say uh, upfront about it one user and this one then it's um, Basant she's actually a little bit more experienced uh, than uh, the rest of the group uh, but it's not like she's some kind of protege uh, because she actually needed a little bit of assistance a little bit of uh, a little bit of um, extra knowledge okay let's read some chat do you know how popular it is for designers and architects in Europe to use the service of private 3d visualizers or do they order visualization room studios I'm trying to find a new clients now so Sergey I would say that it's extremely popular but you kind of have to have a portfolio your own website and uh, look professional so I would say that in order to land a job or uh, to find a client that is going to trust you because you have to be trustworthy if you're going to be a guy that's going to contact some company on Facebook and say hi I do 3d it's not going to work because maybe the direct approach is cool but what if they ask you okay cool show me your credentials and then you say trust me uh that's not going to work you have to have your portfolio instagram it doesn't have to have thousands of followers uh it's just it should be alive also um some kind of uh, portfolio preferably your own website with professional email why not that, that costs pennies uh, so it wouldn't won't be a problem then you contact those companies and yes this is a very popular um popular type of work i can even show you something that uh, blows uh, my mind um, because uh, recently i was asked by one of the companies uh, to work for them to work some uh, on something like this because they uh, created something like that and they want me to work on similar models uh, to create visualizations for products like that this is not mine uh, so uh, this is just something that they want to copy from their um, let's say competitors and they want to create something similar so even um, industrial level of uh, paint needs 3d visual visuals if it's a product it needs visuals uh, photographers are extremely um painful to work with uh, they are extremely pricey and honestly from my experience i don't want to insult any photographer out there but all the photographers that i worked with were such divas that i absolutely hated every moment of it and i really wanted to uh, but luckily i don't have a face pretty enough to do a lot of sessions uh, although uh, i whenever i had to work with them whether it was a photographer for the interiors that we designed or uh, some kind of product shots any kind of modeling uh, for my uh, my uh, colleagues or whatever client the literal nightmare and you as a 3d designer don't need to go through all of the pain and you're not going to be as painful to them because imagine you've got two ton product that you need to visualize or put on your website if a photographer needs to take a photograph of it it's going to be a huge pain because you have to travel you have to move it 
3D doesn't have the problem. So yes, it's wildly popular. Do you know a popular... Um, Okay, I have a little issues with Corona when I finish the render with Corona Sky when uh, I save the JPEG format or PNG Sky disappear. Can you help? Um, Stefan, I doubt that you have the same problem with a JPEG. You probably have it only in PNG. That is really related to one very particular uh, problem. Allow me to demonstrate what you're doing wrong. And this can be also done in output so you don't have to uh, thank me later. So save. And once you select your file, you probably select the PNG. Uh, it doesn't happen in, in JPEG. If it does, you're probably rocking some kind of uh, technology that nobody else ever had. So let's name a file. Then you click on setup here and you have alpha channel. If you click on alpha channel, it is going to save without the background, unless the background is physical or the alpha was set to be non-transparent. So that's pretty much why it happens. And, uh, and you don't and um, you can't have the same problem with JPEG because it what? Why is my JPEG trying to be a PNG file? OK, now it works. So G JPEG file doesn't have the ability to save as um, uh, transparent and it doesn't have the ability to save transparency. But if it saves as a white background, check if you don't have any kind of override selected. Uh, OK. I just make a commercial building modeling and uh, render uh, it, but I also want some buildings in in this on the sides for just nice looking renders. So can I add the model? But I should be heavy for for my laptop. What can I do? Um, well, there are many things that I can suggest to you, but it would be absolutely um, well a bit more time consuming to go over all the options. Try proxies. That's all I can say. But if you want to uh, d dive into that topic way deeper i would recommend you to joining our uh, to join our training because that's when i'm going to give you all the knowledge i can i currently have one of my uh, few of my students that aren't really um, necessarily only working with um let's say 3d throughout the training they're also doing commissions and since they're on the training i also help them finish that, that work i also help them with some guidance with some extra knowledge or just easier ways of doing stuff so once they will be faced with the same issue in the future they will be better prepared uh arch life you can add a ps it's easy yes you can or matching environment and sunlight is difficult i think it's not uh you can fix it easily with uh, correction you can okay i should try thanks uh like always welcome thank you really enjoyed the uh, today's session will this be recorded yes everything that you've uh, seen today was and will be recorded and it's going to be posted on our channel uh, by the way guys i'm looking for somebody who can help me edit my videos to some extent so if you're interested in uh, uh, grabbing a few gigs to uh, you can uh, send me a small portfolio to um, my our email info at physicademico uk uh, so i can uh, look into it and we're may, uh, we might be able to um well cooperate with you will it this be recorded yes again hello from turkey hello and unfortunately we're ending right now so i'm really glad that you join in but it's absolutely over right now and uh, thank you for the answer i have a portfolio very interesting your opinion about uh, after stream uh, thank you very much for all of that beautiful knowledge uh, sorry beautiful uh, support that you gave us and uh, for attending our webinar but this is it for today thank you very much for uh, again for your attendance although i also need to intro uh, introduce you to our next topic which is ex going to be well, last thing I'm going to say today, and then I uh, just, uh, well, we'll end it. Uh, so 3D from zero to hero. We're going to show you how to create this beautiful bathroom in 3D from scratch, from floor plan. We're going to be following it just like it would be a commission by my client. So you're probably going to enjoy it more than usual because this is going to be pretty helpful for all of you that kind of don't know if it's something that you could do okay this is it for today once again thank you see you next time like and subscribe this really helps us and after the stream is over please leave a comment it really 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 helps me and it actually makes my day to have a little bit of conversation in the comments with you once again thank you and see you next time Bye bye